All right, hello everyone, welcome to Skype Hacks. Today I will talk about some really old stuff. I want to talk about some X11 desktop apps that I'm still using. I've been using them for 20 years and uh, they're still really good. And uh, I want to show you what they're about and what you can use them for. So um, I will talk about Xclock and Xload and Xis, Xmessages, Xmark, and I will tell you how to make them look really, really nice. Right, so the first one is Xclock. Xlog is a very simple application. Uh, you start it with Xlog. You need to accept some parameters as well to increase the font size and stuff. But this one is uh, very simple, which is nice. You can scale it to be really big there or a little small or in size. You can set background and foreground colors and you can set the color of this style inside here and many other things. Uh, I like to keep like this, uh, and then I add uh, visual effects uh, with a different tool. I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, the second one I use all the time is Xload. This one, and when you start it up, it doesn't look like much. Um, it just prints out the host name here, but then you will see a graph of the CPU load over time as you as you run it. So if I put that one over here, and then I open a terminal, let's see, okay, and I go to something like Kafka, and then I try to, can I say Gradle build? No, I don't think I have Gradle installed. Uh, let's say if I just search the hard drive, you can see now I'm spending some CPU cycles here, and then you can see there's a graph being drawn, and this will then, of course, look really nice over time. So that's one that I use. And so that was Xload and then Xase. And if I show you Xase, let's see, I'm going to stop that one because that was really nice. Uh, if I start Xase, uh, it's this one. And it's really, really fun. And uh, kids love this one as well. Uh, move the mouse around and you can see the eyes move with it. It's really, really cool. And you may ask, what's the use of that? And I will tell you, uh, so what I use it for. So I have many desktops, many virtual desktops. Uh, like on, on the one, I have my editor. On two, I have my browsers. Number three, I have all files uh, or terminals, typically. And then I have additional browsers on six. And I have personal messaging on 10 and so on and so forth. And so when I have a long running build, I compile something, say, on Workspace 3, then I add semicolon, let's say I can show you. Uh, so if I do like a make, and then that takes a long time. Yeah. Then I do XS. And so, and then I switch to a different workspace. And what this does is that when make finishes, whatever the output was, whatever, you know, successful or an error, and uh, these exercises will pop up on my current workspace. And then I know, all right, my work, my uh, compile was done. I better check back on it. So this really, really fun, simple tool is actually really useful. Then XMessage, uh, it, it's for spacing up uh, shell scripts a bit. And of course, they are more fancy libraries that you can use that gives you GTK um, widgets. Uh, but I find sometimes this one is just just what I need. So the operator, it works like you you do something boo, and then you say x ma x methods, and um, and th then you get the the matches like that. You can be okay. You ex exit data. So that's also sometimes really useful. Really nice to add a small small widget into something you're doing. Um, the last one I want to show you is. Uh, Xmag, which lets you select something, let's say here, and then you get like pixel inspection of that graphic. So if you're doing web design and for graphical work, this can actually be really useful. And this is a really old tool, uh, which still still is around right here. All right, so that's all all nice and good, but it looks kind of old, right? So I have a way to make them look really nice 
and so simple. So what I do is that I have this thing called pcom. Um, I can show you the config file. It looks like this. Looks like this. Um, and often you add opacity, uh, like translucency to everything, active opacity. Uh, but I set that to 1.0. So that means by default, I don't want any translucency at all. And then here I define the applications where I do want some transparency. And, and uh, I find <laughs> flipping this on its head works really well. So for all these X apps, so you, here you can see I have X clock, X size, X load, and kitty the kitty the terminal, I get transparency. But for everything else, I don't. And that's just that's just perfect. That's just the way I want it. So I'm going to show you this now. I'm going to line up these three, and I'm going to exit out of the editor, and then I will start pcom. Dear, and now um, let's see if I just remove um, kit bit here. So now you can say uh, x is here. That's transparent. The clock is there as well, and the same for Xload. And you can also say, if you zoom in a bit, you can see that the corners are rounded. So it's all really, really nice. And normally I put it in the margin like that. And um, it allows me to keep a track in the time. As you can see, I don't have any um, chill bars, state bars on my desktop. So this for me, just to put this on, the secondary screen is uh, exactly what I want. So it's up and now the force exits. So with that, um, that's what I want to show you today. So there are really super fast, useful apps. They're available absolutely everywhere where X11 runs or Xorg, uh, Linux FreeBSD, OpenBSD, you have it. Um, if you have switched to Wayland, there are some equivalents. Um, but they're not, not a pure Wayland equivalent for all of these, as far as I know. So that's it. Thanks you so much for watching. I will see you around next time.